Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, investors, friends, family followers, this is the IR4 podcast, aka the fourth industrial revolution. We're here today with Tyler Hirsch and we are discussing capital financing, raising money, venture capitalists, and what the future looks like for that. This episode presented by and sponsored by Score Vodka. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. You're going to love it. We're getting a little tipsy. It's going to be fun. <laughs> Tune in. All right, so as Jeremy, you know, and Tyler, if you've been up to date with the last few of if our episodes, been up to date. we there's been a crap load of business ideas that we've just came into conversation with. And yeah. we're like, oh, that, that'd be a great idea. That'd be a great idea. So one of my favorite ones was the self-generating energy gym. Yeah, I think that's a. Li- Have you heard about this? No. So they're doing them in Europe, where all the machines you pretty much when you work out. Mm-hmm. It's just, it produces energy. It's like a hamster yeah. wheel. Yeah, like, like a giant hamster wheel. Everyone's going to go, you're working out anyway, but you might as well create energy while you're working out. So you keep right. the lights on. So you keep the lights on. Yeah. So you, you pay all the utilities, and then probably you give some back. Sure. Send it, sell it back. Anyway. So as seasoned entrepreneurs, <laughs> you started, you started your, comp- you started your comp- <laughs> company. He's he seasoned. <laughs> Um, I'm still working and on this. With, and with these business ideas that we've come up with, I thought it would be behoove us to talk about kind of how to start a business and how to get funding for a business and how, you know, everything from birth and conception, which, which yeah. the ideas yeah. flow, but mm-hmm. then to exit. Because I feel like there probably is a few of you out there who are, are entrepreneurs or have at least thought about or entertain the idea of starting a business. Absolutely. But one of the toughest things to do is is getting started and start taking that first step forward. Yeah. Um, so, so Tyler, why don't you, Tyler's back second time, but t- tell us a little bit about where you're at with Score Vodka. Sure. And then we'll get, you know, do another taste test sure. to make sure there it's it the same. Yeah. We're, we're going to taste test and make sure it's still high quality D- vodka. Different bottle this time. So you never know. <laughs> Bigger bottle. Quality could be different. It could be different. But, um, but where are you at with Score and what are you currently working on? Uh, Score's doing great. Sales are up. Uh, from this time last year, up twenty five percent. Nice, bud. Nice. Congratulations. Yeah, I'm three of that percent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <right>. <laughs> um, That's great. But yeah, no, going great. Um, really concentrating on the markets we have. Okay. Growing them, and then we'll bust wide open another few markets. Sure. And, and go from there. Um, we have actually, I mean, the last time we talked about the the issues with. Um, bringing it over from Ukraine. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, have some some different ways that we're we're working that. So cutting uh, cutting down shipping time. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So that's that's great. But yeah, have streamlined delivery. Still still out of my right outside of Miami, mm-hmm. Hollywood, um, to all of our distributors and okay. And we're just rocking and rolling. That's and, great. And to to reemphasize how you got involved with Score, it was they needed some help or some capital, which business owners need. Mm-hmm. I don't want to say need, because if you can bootstrap a, uh, a company, that's fantastic. And I encourage people to, to do that. But you're going to get to a point, whether it's lack of inventory, lack of growth capital, whatever it is, you may need some type of capital injection. Mm-hmm. And uh, we covered it a little bit about that, as that's how you got involved with SCORE. But sure. currently, because I know behind the scenes kind of what you're working on now, but Maybe we can talk about how to create a business, but when we get to that capital point where you're mm-hmm. needing some money, let's let's talk a little about, about sure. what you're doing now. Well, yeah. there's different levels of capital. You know? Right. I mean, there's, Tell us about these levels. Yeah. Well, well first, you know, we'll to answer your question. We we'll go with the startups. Okay. Um, you know, there's there's different <laughs> levels. I mean, there's you know, there's your mom and pop shops mm-hmm. that start there. You know, where I want to start a dry cleaners. Yeah. Okay. All right, how are you going to get your machines? How are you going to get your, your lease building? How are you going to get, uh, how are you going to pay for employees? You know, you, it's, it's hard to start a business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know? I mean, so. see, some people may be stuck in, I'm not stuck in a 9 to 5, but doing some things to, uh, and then save enough money, which is hard to do when you have mm-hmm. expenses at home, or yeah. you have a family, but if you're trying to save all this money and then it gets to a point where, okay, I saved a, you know, a quarter of a million dollars, now I can go start my business, it's a huge leap of faith because you're leaving something that's so so secure, yep. mm-hmm. but you've built up that wealth to go start something. But and then there's these things called angel investors and seed capital. Right. So maybe we can start there. Yeah, and that can go, you know, 
big labels, angel investors and all that, but that can be anywhere from $1,000 to a billion dollars, mm -hmm. you know? It just depends on your project. And I think the hardest thing about any size project is, like you said, getting started, but having that, that uh, intuition to see past your first three years. Yeah, yeah. Because when you ask for money, you go, okay, well, I need... I need pencils. I need paper. Mm -hmm. I need, you, 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 you can put all the stuff in your business, but people often forget what you need to run your business. What happens after? You've got to pay yeah. bills. You've yeah. got to, you, you're going to have unexpected um, issues. You're going to have stuff break down. You're going to have employees, you know, that that may come and go. There, there's there's a lot of turnover. You know, just being a business owner, having mm -hmm. employees, and that all costs money. Mm -hmm. Taxes. Oh. Yeah. That's <laughs> <laughs> my CPA today. Yeah. yeah. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. So you know, um, but, you know, to answer your question about, you know, where do people get these, these, these dollars, these investment dollars, is it's, it's finding someone, you know, the, the best way to do it is find someone who's interested in your business. Yeah. Especially if you're starting small, so they can help you tackle those um, those issues that you're going to have. Mm -hmm. You know, whether it's 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 a hundred thousand dollars or a hundred million dollars, if that investor is interested in the business, they're going to call you up. Hey, right? How you doing? Oh, right. I had this problem. Well, let me see. Let me see if I can help. Now, um, now is this a friend that you would have, or, or someone that you would find in the connections? It's anywhere. You know, the small businesses, it's it's more friends and family. Okay. You see that a lot more. Right. Um, you know, you go to, to Uncle Steve, and, hey, Uncle Steve, you know, I want to start this dry cleaners. Could you give me 25 grand? You know, here, we'll pay it back with X amount of interest, or you can give them equity. Yep. You know, there, there's a hundred different ways to, to skin a cat. Mm -hmm. I mean, banks, in. SBA loans, or, I mean, you can go take out some type of loan. Sure. Uh, I don't encourage people to refinance their home. And, and no, no. Th that's that's yeah. a way of doing it, though. Yeah. Or going to, you know, I know there's tons of different groups on all these different social media sites, LinkedIn and Facebook and uh, either, I talked to a guy today, uh, 10X, free plug for you, Eric. Uh, just got off the phone with him. But uh, there's these programs where you can go in and be involved with this community and spitball ideas about how to raise capital. But, mm -hmm. you know, at that early stage, um, I don't think one thing that I've started to see by looking at these startups is <clears throat> these businesses are so quick to give up equity because mm -hmm. they're sitting there and like, I, want, I, I need the capital. I want to get things going. It's a dream. It's a passion. You're sitting in the locker room, you're ready to go out into the field, but you're not properly equipped yet. Sure. Give me what I need and I'll, you know, relinquish this much equity, which in the long run, when you go to uh, sell your business or when you go to, uh, you know, pay out it, it, dividends to the business owners, you can be given up a lot of, of, of the meat on the bone there, mm -hmm. you know, so. Yeah, well, and you know, what's funny is, you know, and this equation doesn't necessarily work out, but for all businesses, but most successful businesses, if they're selling something, and they usually are, your profit margin is what? Usually 40%. Uh, say, 30. I was going to say 20%, 20%, 20%. 20 to 30 is, yeah. 40, 40, 40 for me to invest. I'll, I'll, <laughs> and I'll, I was looking at that calculation yeah. wow. from a service business. So I have less, yeah. I have less overhead yeah. and less sure. costs. Sure. And it's, more, it's just manual but, yeah, labor. If you're selling a product or a service, you know, it's typically um, 20, 30%. So you're giving up 25, 30% of your company mm -hmm. to, to the investor. And you go to sell 25 Thirty percent to your yeah. investor. Yeah, <laughs> you come out. Interesting. You Interesting. Know, boring. You yeah. Know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, yeah. It's like, what did I just do for three years? Sure. And you know, sure. You, you literally lose that much money to your investor. It's, it's I I would um, your profit. From pers speaking from personal experience, when when you're a young entrepreneur, whether and I'm not talking age, but as an entrepreneur, you're young. Obviously, if you're uh, in your thirties and you've gone through the workforce, you know kind of what not bullshit artists, but people who can wine and dine you and make you feel good. Sure. But as a young entrepreneur, so if you're fresh out of college or, or you're in your uh, mid-20s, these investors with high dollars can, you know, put you on a private jet and take you out oh, to sure. dinner and spend, yeah. you know, a couple hundred dollars and make you feel, give you all these warm and fuzzies. Mm -hmm. 
And then the investment happens, and you're like, oh, okay, here we go. But you really don't have – they're not there like they were when they wanted to invest. Of course not. So be very – I think – I have to stress, be very careful with that because um, – the value add in the investor is something you should always look for, but make sure it's something that will help the business, not something that helps you immediately, but long term. Mm -hmm. right. Well, and that's going back to finding investors interested mm -hmm. in your business, not taking advantage of you. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, and right. that's because that happens. You know, a lot of these investors they see dollar signs. Yeah. And unfortunately, that's all it is to them. It's a game. You know, the the investor that cares about his investment is, you know, it's sad to say, it's it's becoming a a dinosaur, right? You know, right? And uh, good point. It, you know, it, it, it's just be careful who you're getting in bed with. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's that's the thing. If, you know, you need to give up some equity, but at the same time, this individual or this company can lend you a hand in running the business and mm -hmm. give you some advice on the mistakes you're going to make mm -hmm. before you make them. Yeah, yeah. That's <laughs> key. That's How key. much does that cost? Well, yeah. I mean, in in. To, to pull just one small point out of that, and if this bridges over to another conversation, that's fine, but it's the, the, the system of venture capital funding and all these different funding methods that have served the business community for a couple decades are becoming archaic. Mm. And how now, so? And how so? I'm explaining. Okay. So now you have you know the Jobs Act and equity crowdfunding, right. much like Kickstarter programs, things yep. like that. That's there where you know the everyday person can invest in that business. Indiegogo and Kickstarter, yeah. are huge. And now you huge. have a responsibility to not just one investor, but a multiple investors, yeah, under thousands, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And you got to give them a T-shirt or mm -hmm. whatever, something. Like and and yeah, <laughs> and one thing we one <laughs> thing we cover a lot in this podcast is the blockchain world and cryptocurrencies sure. and ICOs. We've had two or three episodes on that, but I feel like that system of raising capital is disrupting um, current or archaic funding methods like VC. Because a VC, you're going out to Silicon Valley or these these certain areas, and you have a pitch deck, and you're sitting there, and the process of contracts can take six months to a year. Mm -hmm. With an ICO or an equities offering through a crowdfunding campaign, I can move pretty quickly. But um, with the whole ICO thing, that is, I would compare that to, and with all the SEC updates happening in the past two weeks, that's like a mini IPO. Mm -hmm. And those are securities. And yep. we heard the SEC, yep. and they're here to protect the investor, first and foremost. Sure. So the people purchasing the securities, or the coins or tokens, which can be viewed as a security, um, you need to make sure you're doing it the right way because there's a lot of scam artists out there, mm -hmm. which we've covered before. But mm -hmm. out of this pain point in that in that kind of funding mechanism, there's something that's hugely disruptive in the VC space. How quickly can you raise capital, and how efficiently can it be? If you go through the right avenues, you can you can totally take out VC funding from that equation. And it's like doing, a, 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 like I said, a mini IPO. Yeah, mm -hmm. interesting. Makes sense. I mean, so is your question like, is that has that happened yet, or is it is it happening, or is it going to happen? I think we've seen it happen, but I feel like seventy five percent of that type of funding has been some type of the investors aren't seeing the return, mm -hmm. and they took a gamble, or they they injected that capital to receive some type of token or some type of representation of a security, but. There's a secondary market where you can go sell that security right away. So now you're really putting the worth of the business in the hands of a secondary market where people mm. are speculating, much like yourself. Yeah. So why did you like? Why did you not like the uh, crowdfunding equity uh, raising type of avenue? Well, because it doesn't help the business. It gives the business money. Mm -hmm. but it doesn't help the business. It doesn't. You know, the business owner and they're. And I think the rules are most of them, like, you have to offer these investors you know, something. There's there's tiers. Yeah, right. You can get a, a, a T-shirt, a hat, or a sweatshirt if you give them, you know, $500. Right. You know, but what what is that doing for the business? You know, what if the business flops? Mm -hmm. I have a T-shirt. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and, and where's the business owner? That's, it's, I think it's hurting our small business owners that mm. go to this because there's no education, there's no, yep. there's there's no, you know, teacher on top going, hey, that's my money. Yeah, let's let's look at this decision you're about to make. Right. 
Yeah, and that goes back to what I was saying. Have someone that has an investment in the business, you know, here and here, not just not yeah. just yeah. here. Interesting. And it takes it away. Yeah. And crowdfunding is insanely popular. Mm -hmm. Insanely yeah. popular. Mm -hmm. And you have a good marketing video, you can raise some good money, even yeah. if it's a prototype. And I've, and I've seen a yeah. lot of companies go and get get. Gosh, we've seen that one go back three or four, five, six times. And get what seven, eight hundred thousand dollars. I don't even know what the yeah. it was, but and they're hopping from platform to platform. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, that's not regulated. Wow, right? Yeah. yeah. And so, I don't know. I, I, I think. Well, the question is from for me though. Is that more of a downside to the potential business owner or to the investor? Because there's so both. much. Yeah, both. I think it's both. Yeah. I think well. I would say it's both yeah. more for the investor. I mean, I'd have a good time running down the street with a bottle of vodka, throwing one dollar bills out of my pocket, <laughs> and go on a crowdfunding site. Hey. What you <laughs> <laughs> next? Right after that, we'll do this. <laughs> but I mean, what really? What's in it for me? I got yeah. a ton of hats. Yeah, yeah. You know, I got a ton of hats. I got a ton of t-shirts. <laughs> I don't need one right. that says, you know, X Y Z product. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. and we're talking about retail investors. That's like going to the casino and putting. You know, a hundred bucks on twenty and five on the roulette versus playing black and red. Yeah. You know, like yeah. look at look at the the potential for return. Now, if you believe in the product, I mean, it's your money. Do with it what you want. But I I personally do not. I'm not a huge fan of equity crowdfunding for those reasons as well. I Let's think go it, play online poker with yeah. money. Do something something that will actually pay us back. Right? Well, well, let me ask you that question then. So let's say I'm a, let's say I'm an investor in an equity crowd, uh, whatever product. So the cooler. I'm sorry, you saw that one, right? Mm -hmm. The cooler. The cooler. So it was pretty much like this new cooler. Uh, it kept things colder longer. Had like a radio in it. Had like mm -hmm. bottle caps. Oh, yeah. It rolled like automatically. You could sit on it. It was like a yeah. scooter. It was like nice. this, they pretty much put a car in a cooler. Yeah. They had a cool promo video. So my question is, what is the benefits for me as an equity investor in a crowd fund? Do I only get the product, or do I get a return on the business itself? Well, you're not an equity investor in the crowd fund. Equity is not even in the game. You know, you, and I believe they keep all their equity. Yeah, so you're just potentially potentially you're being in a for product. The well, if they do like a reg, I think it's a reg A's equity crowdfunding. They will dedicate you know a certain portion of that business so let's say 10 percent but that 10 percent is going to but that goes to the actual crowdfunding site and then the crowdfunding go, site takes yeah. success <laughs> and uh -huh. you, but it's not like if you invest in an equity crowdfunding campaign it's not like i'm not going to get rich i have a certificate yeah. and i'm a, a securities holder or i have i own part of this cooler company mm. and you're not going to have no. fucking board meetings and hey i'm sitting no. on the board yeah. you get your t-shirt maybe six months later that's it. And maybe the cooler. It's it's not yeah, maybe. <laughs> if if you're at the proper tier level. Yeah. Right. You know, but you know, it, it's not like a to take it to cryptocurrency. Sure. I bought Bitcoin at five hundred dollars. Sure. And now I made something off sure. of it. You know? You don't get that satisfaction. Yeah. You know, and and, and that's yeah, or that's it the can devil take an extremely long time. Yeah. And and the, the I think I would love to look at the success rates of equity crowdfunding, but right. You know, and then, that would be an interesting statistic. I mean, I don't know. Oh yeah, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't have know. any of those answers. You know, but before I, we can segue into this other space, I want to talk about in the in the ICO or cryptocurrency world, if they do an ICO you have a coin or token that you purchased, that's not a representation currently, in, in current regulations, that's not a representation of the business. That's a digital asset that should be classified as security, mm -hmm. but you're not getting any percentage of that company. Mm -hmm. So if I own a business in Singapore, Gibraltar, Switzerland, and I own 100% of it, and I do an ICO, you're not getting any equity in that business. Mm -hmm. You're getting something that should be a, a Should be an equity, but you're not but actually getting not. equity. Right, yeah. right. Rest of the episode presented by Score Vodka, one of our sponsors. Thank you, Tyler, hey, for sponsoring the Iron Four podcast. Time. Just as good. Oh, delish, <laughs> delish. So this is the second time, by the way. Second. Time. And the first one was even. The first one was equally it's as good. Just better when you get a buzz. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It is. In anything you do. Yeah. Yeah. So we're discussing equity sites. We're discussing crowdfunding. We're discussing the pros and cons. Uh, how? 
easy is it to raise capital? Now, I'm asking ask this question as a comma because, as you were mentioning earlier, when someone has a grand idea, they want to do something, you're going to run into two issues. Do you have the time or do you have the money? Mm -hmm. And the time part, you'll never be able to create. The money part, how easy is it? Well, it, it's easy if you're prepared. Mm. Um, How's one prepared? Well, you, you simply design your business for funding. It's, okay. It's, mm. Okay, if you're a startup, okay. okay, you have no income. Who wants to fund that? A lot of people, believe it or not. You know, a lot of people design their companies around startups. Mm -hmm. And the, these are your equity guys. Mm -hmm. They're like, I like what you're doing here. But so I'm they like, want ownership. Right. Yeah, yeah, they Absolutely. want ownership. They want ownership, and they want you to do all the work and mm -hmm. make them rich. Mm -hmm. And, hey, sure, that's fine. You know, and there's... Um, you know, and there's if you if you've already got a company going and you're cash flow positive, you'll be batting away investors with yeah. a stick. Sure. Yeah. You know, it's a great problem to have. Right. You know, you just want to you want to hey, I want to expand into another state. I need five hundred thousand dollars to do this exact model I have here in Nashville, and I want to do it in Birmingham. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 And you know, it's the same same model, same. Uh, demographics of whatever mm -hmm. the product is, mm -hmm. or use it. It's home run. All right. You, you, you beat them off with a stick. Well, you said something that I haven't heard before, but makes a whole hell of a lot of sense, and that's you design your business for funding. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people who want or need investment just have a design, a business model design. Yep. That doesn't mean it's designed for funding. Exactly. That doesn't mean you're taking into account runway, time, capital, you know, wh where the costs are coming mm -hmm. from, repaying dividends sure. or, or whatnot. But uh, that's a huge key point I didn't even think about. Yeah. Design your business for funding. Right. Yeah. Well, let's talk about what that looks like. I mean, so let's say I, you mentioned preparation. Uh, mm -hmm. if, I, if I come to you, uh, what are the things that I should have prepared, like as in like an outline? Do you want like a physical paper? Do you want an uh, elevator pitch? Do you want a slide presentation? You know what? All the above. above. Okay. Um, However, you're most comfortable with your presentation. Okay. Whether you can be a vocal person mm -hmm. and explain it to me and have bullet points and documents. Some yeah. people like doing that. Some people are a huge PowerPoint. Here's my slides explaining yeah. everything. Yeah. Uh, other people are Excel spreadsheet people. Yeah. My favorites. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The spreadsheets speak to me. Sure. But, you know, bottom line, get your point across quickly. Mm -hmm. um, the spreadsheets can get carried away. The business plans can get carried away. They, Interesting. You know, have a nice executive summary. No matter what your pitch preference is, mm -hmm. have a nice three to five page executive summary explaining to me what you're going to do, where you're going with it, exit strategy, and how much money you're going to make. Exit strategy is a big one. <laughs> exit strategy is a big one because yeah. you'll get tons of people that go, hey, I want to create this much. And like you mentioned earlier, my biggest takeaway so far is uh, most people have a three-year plan, yeah. yeah, but they don't push their brain to that uncomfortable level of what does three years afterwards look like? So let's say you're doing a dry cleaners, mm -hmm. okay, and you you raised two hundred thousand dollars capital, you got two buildings. Right. What's after that? How many employees do you have? How mm -hmm. much are they? How much are do they want for wages? How much are you paying them? Do you want to open new sites? Do you want to franchise it, or do you want one shop do a good job for seven to ten years and sell it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, so there's multiple ways of looking at exactly. it. Exactly. So what is the exit strategy? That's a huge one, man. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely. absolutely. Wow. Yeah. Whether it's for sale, whether it's to go. Uh, um, um, you know, go public with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, have an edge extract. There's, there's <laughs> two points I want to make. <laughs> you want to go? Go for it. Go for it. Get real excited. There's, there's two points I want to make. One being, um, I heard from a older gentleman who is a VC and said a simple sense that made complete sense to me was, look at and especially if you're an athlete and and you can correlate business to athletics, look at uh, the business in four quarters or four separate channels. HR, you're going to need human capital. You're going to need people to work, whether that's just you or, or other employees. Sure. Um, have a grasp on that. Have a grasp on the marketing and the campaigning. How are you going to promote your business? Um, 
And then the third one being uh, operations. How is it going to work? What's the engine under the hood look like? Mm -hmm. How do you actually generate the money? And fourth being the financials. Mm -hmm. And the financials are everything we're talking about. And I know if I'm looking at a business from an investment point of view, I can go through a 10-page executive summary and business plan and pick out, it would take me 30 seconds to go through the first eight, but when you look at the financials, if that doesn't fit or doesn't make sense, just throw it out the window. Yeah. Or you go back and say, hey, listen, here, everything mm. looks great, but mm. you got to get your financials together. Sure. Man, Tyler, and, I have so many questions. And I would say, <laughs> and I would say, whatever your strong suit is, let's say you're a marketing guru and you don't have, you don't have good leadership skills and it takes a lot for you to admit what you're not good at, yeah. but bring other team members in yeah. or bring investors in who, who that's their strong suit. Right. You know, And if you're a financial whiz, that's probably the best case if you're looking for funding. Because if you can put together a nice Excel sheet and show people how it's going to work, the marketing people are all around. The yeah, tough part is finding the yeah, guys. Yeah, yeah. The, the guys who know how to make money work are usually investors. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. so... Yeah. Because they see thousands and top of thousands of, of businesses out mm -hmm. here. You know, I can't tell you how many businesses I've seen. I was just it breaks my heart because they have a good business making a million dollars over a million dollars a year, but they're spending it all. Yeah. yeah on yeah. what are they spending on, on? Whether it's it's loans or whether it's it's employees or mm. you know their costs. Yeah. Every business I've gone into to to help get funded has had a spending problem. Yep. Mm, you know. Interesting. And you know, it, mm. and it goes back to don't spend money you don't have. Yeah, yeah. The, the, and the and don't be greedy about it. You know, and and listen, if you're the business owner, you should be the last to eat. Take mm. care of who you need to take care of. Pay back any type of loans or debt that you have, which we're going to get into debt financing in a second. But pay off and and pay the bills and do what you need to do. But you should be the last to eat. And I promise you. You, I don't want to say starve, but you bootstrap it for the first couple of years. Yeah. That will pay off tenfold at the end. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But climbing yourself into debt and everything can can be uh, a struggle. But especially initially, because good debt, oh, yeah. you know, like like you mentioned, debt financing. I mean, we can just go ahead and hop into that. Yeah. yeah. Well, I was gonna I was gonna segue over there by saying. You can go to, like we said before, go to a bank and take out a small business loan. That's mm -hmm. great. It's hard to do when you, I mean, they are, banks are very, very hard. Very hard to go. Which is, you know, I'm glad they are because, you know what. If well, they then were, any, any idiot would run around and then we end up where we end up, 2008. Yeah, yeah. exactly. You know, yeah. Um, <laughs> but for these for these young guys who, again, are so fixated on, I just want to go, I want to get started, I need my money, and they're, they're undervalue their company a little bit and take, just like you see on Shark Tank. Mm -hmm. And they'll settle for giving up more equity for that capital. But what people really don't see this resource as is the debt side of things. Mm -hmm. And it, debt can be a very scary word for a lot of people, especially don't know how to properly put that into a business model. Sure. But debt financing is a great alternative if you want to you know, uh, keep your equity, keep which in the long run mm -hmm. and in the exit is going to benefit you. Absolutely. So borrow some money, pay off the loans, would you say design your business model around funding? Yeah. So if you take those figures into consideration, you know what marks you have to hit in order to pay back that loan. Yeah. yeah. So is that debt financing? Is that what that is? In a nutshell. Yeah. yeah. You know, debt financing <clears throat> is, you know, there's short term, there's long term. You know, when, when people think of debt finances, the most popular one is the mortgage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you got your 30 year, your 15 year, your, your 15 year arms, your 10 year, your three year, five year arms. There's 100 million of them. Um, but they're all designed around one thing, an amortized loan. Right. You know, unless you're talking about a balloon loan, which is... Whole other subject. <laughs> yeah, whole other subject. Yeah. But, um, I like balloons. <laughs> you're cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, but no, you you know, a good debt funding to the ratio of your income is smart. Mm -hmm. what, what do you think that proper ratio would be? Boy, it, it's tough to say, really, because... It can depend on the industry big time. It'll depend on the industry, it, it'll depend because, you know, in a perfect world, you're going to get your $500,000 loan mm -hmm. for your business, and mm -hmm. your business is going to grow. Mm -hmm. So the ratio is going to change. Right. You know, right. because in a nice amortized loan, you're going to have the same payment. Right. You know, um, but, you know, a, a short, the short term, the hard money guys that do the short term loans, that are that are debt or is expensive. Very yeah. pricey, especially real estate. Uh, you know, I, mean, I was going to say, 
the merchant cash advances, the right. anything under you know a million that you're looking to borrow, it's going to have high Less interest rates. Less than a rates, year. High interest rates. High. Rate. high. And, and you got to take 18, all that shit 20%. into consideration. Absolutely. You yeah. know? Um, but is it okay to tell everyone kind of what you've stepped into now? Of course. Yeah. So since our last uh, conversation <laughs> with Tyler, I've obviously, we've shared some drinks outside the IR4 podcast mm-hmm. room. Yeah. Believe it or not, <laughs> we wouldn't tell you about it. But you know who you get. <laughs> That's right. But last time we kind of talked about what Tyler has done in his consulting career. But since then, came across this great opportunity. I'll, I'll let you kind of make the introduction about what you're doing now. Sure. Um, well, you know, obviously, as an independent broker um, for capital, mm-hmm. your your main goal is to you know, work directly for a lender instead yeah. of yeah. working both sides of the ball, right. playing offense and defense. Which there's tons of those out there. Oh, gosh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And and usually those brokers work with other brokers, and it goes through this funding resource to this funding resource. It's a ladder system. Mm-hmm. And half of them are, hey, give me a 1000 bucks, and I'll go through your documents, and I'll submit your deal. Yeah. And in 24 hours, sorry, you're not submitting. Right. I right. saw yeah, there's a lot tons of, of people. Schmucks. A lot, a lot of schmucks. schmucks. Yeah. Um, but um, got brought on as a um, broker for a fund. Nice. Uh, nice. Called Global Alliance <laughs> Venture. Um, and eventually uh, got asked to apply for the CEO job. Mm-hmm. Nice. And I interviewed and I got it. Congrats, man. So, well done. Yeah. So I am the CEO of Global Alliance Ventures. Um, we were actually putting a headquarters here in Nashville, mm-hmm. um, but uh, they've been lending for almost almost ten years now. In the past ten, like nine years, they've, they've lent out eight point two billion dollars. Wow! They've lent out eight point two wow. billion dollars. Wow! Um, the money is there. It, it is. The money's and there. the fun part is, just recently, um, we've really taken a step up and gotten a international lender um, that puts our our under our roof almost a half a trillion dollars. Wow. Could, yeah. Spread around the world. I love you it. Know. Love it's it. not sure. ours, yeah, but yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. we have access yeah. to that yeah. much, which is... It, That's huge, man. Yeah. That's huge. Um, you know, and we're into healthcare, and we're into energy, and we're into uh, renewables, and we're into cannabis, and we're mm-hmm. into, you know... Really? How, about, how about tech podcasts? <laughs> That's Actually, right. we were looking for one of those today. Boom. We got one of those. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> On that subject, I wanted to ask you, though, so kind of two, two main questions. Uh, is there an industry or a sector or a job f- a field, if you will, of mm-hmm. something that you prefer to look for and then something that's just garbage? So, like, let's say, hey, I want to start a car company. Mm-hmm. That's probably going to fall in the garbage area, maybe. Mm-hmm. But and then someone will create an alcohol company. So, what are something that you're looking for? Well, you know, we. I, I've always loved um, environmental. Mm-hmm. Um, we we look at a lot of the renewables, the yep. recycling, recycling tires, or, or turning waste into huge fuels. industry. Well, Oh my gosh! Um, it's gonna grow manure, so big. manure so into big. methane gas to run factories and cars. I love that stuff. That's that's yeah. That's what gets my my yeah. motor going. There. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, stuff to stay away from. Um, cash businesses. Um, like cash advances or anything? like strip clubs. Like okay, things like that. that are, <laughs> you know, cash business that don't you do the strip club. Yeah, it's, uh, and, and not knocking strip clubs. Hey, they work, but <laughs> it's, it's hard, hard to track. Yeah, as an investor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. You know, um, so those type of businesses we we stay with. So interesting. So there's there's you guys have a direct funding resource. Um, those. Those that network or those, that funding resource that you have that you guys have pulled together, sure they probably have people in in their own offices looking at certain deals or at least monitoring and sitting on the board of directors and they're managing their current investments. But I think what's interesting in in, in your line of work is you're sourcing the deals. So those mm-hmm. you know and and explain the program if you will to sure. everyone. Sure. The, the amount and the interest mm. rates and everything. Sure, but, sure, sure, sure. But then we can move into the sourcing the deals and how that is a need. There's a need to, to be that right. middle guy. Right. Well, and that's and just to ride your coattails, or that's exactly what we are. So those mm. these investors, they don't need that on staff. 
they're trusting us to do that right. for them. Right. Right. Um, so we literally talk directly to the mm-hmm. investors. Nice. And there may be three or four or five, six, seven in one group. Mm-hmm. And we manage, you know, five, six, seven billion dollars. Sure. And there's typically only one spokesman for the group. The other one is just like, okay. It's like a syndicate. Hey. Yeah. Right. Makes sense. Right. Makes sense. Um, but, you know, our particular program, you know, is a debt program like we just mm-hmm. talked about. And it's a long-term debt program anywhere from seven to 25 years, depending on the size of the loan. Um, we have minimums of $5 million. We can go all the way up to a billion dollars. Um, and that's climbing now that we've added some mm-hmm. some other investors. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, interest rates anywhere from 4 to 7%. Mm-hmm. Um, wow, that's cheap. It's great. Yeah, you know, cheap. But Whoa. what a concept. What a concept. Make a loan that a business can afford. That's great. I mean, you think about it. <laughs> Weird. When, when you say that out loud. <laughs> yes. Oh, my God. But, I mean, you see less default... Yeah, and you'll see more payments, which is good for you. Exactly. And it's good for them. Absolutely. I also, rub, rub. I also think by putting the floor at $5 million for you guys weeds out all the... A lot of... I, I wouldn't say all, but a lot, <laughs> yeah. There's even some bags at $5 million. But that, I mean, at five when million. you're talking in those amounts, either the business is a little bit established or they're serious about what the hell's going on. Right. Mm-hmm. And they understand the situation that they're in because that's you're talking about a lot of money, you know. Sure. This isn't a fifty thousand dollar, you know, cash advance loan that I got to go, you know, pay the yeah. bills and keep the lights yeah. on to dry yeah, clean this, this is real. Yeah. This yeah. is big time. Yeah. You know, this is you're playing with the big dogs at this point. Right. right? And even when you're going to the billion dollars. Sure. You know, Five hundred million. I mean it's Substantial. And I mean, some of the biggest pharmaceutical companies in the world started with a two hundred fifty million dollar loan. That's mm-hmm. the realm we're in right now. Mm-hmm. Wow, wow, that's amazing. Yeah, but it takes a lot. I mean, again, you design that. You take a lot of research. You crunch the numbers. You mm-hmm. build out this information. You're going to have to put in time. Like I said, if you want one thing, if you want to build your business or grow your business, it, it takes time or money. Absolutely. So you get to decide which one you put in first. You can put in money and, and have someone build the stuff for you, or put in the time and you build it and then go get the money. Sweat so equity. It has to be one of the two. Equity. Yeah, got a little sweat equity. Mm-hmm. So what are your thoughts on the Shark Tank? That's what my original question is going to be. Well, what do you think about it? And should we create our own? Our own <laughs> we shark? do have I think we should. Level. I think we should. I mean, uh, we have a video camera. We, this, is that what that is? <laughs> this whole time. I thought it was just you a would, I know, but it does video. <laughs> Uh, I think that'd be great. Um, I, you know, I think Shark Tank is unfortunate for some of the products that come on there mm-hmm. because there's a lot of good products that mm-hmm. don't get funded. What's the one that just sold for a billion dollars to Amazon that they turned down? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I forget what you're talking yep, about, but yep, yeah, yep. I didn't know. Was it? Oh, it was the ring, the doorbell. Yep. yep. Well, yeah, yeah. The video doorbell. That was, dude, they did that, and as soon as I did that, I'm like, man, they don't have the knowledge mm-hmm. of that industry to to buy into that, because none of them are that specialized in that. No. Well, like, no. there is some entrepreneurs that go on there and use it as a marketing leg. For sure. Which for is sure. awesome. Well, I heard I heard a rumor um, from someone that if you go on the show and they televise it, that the Shark Tank already agrees to own a small percentage of your company. Oh. Now, I don't know if that's true or not. I don't know. I believe, I but I believe so. So, so I, looked a couple at, guys. I looked at a company yeah. who's been on it before, and he said, like, you know, that's a five or seven minute segment on TV. It's like an hour and a half. Hour and a half long, yeah. They yeah. edit the whole thing. Because I was going to do it. Yeah. I wanted to be on Shark Tank for oh, really? my companies, yeah. Uh, I thought about it, and um, a, one, a gentleman who works here in Franklin was like, kind of gave me the rundown. He's like, well, okay, you may or may not be on TV, but if you are going to be on TV, you can almost rest assured that you're going to have to sign a contract. It could be 1% equity, but you they're going to have some hold on because they're sure. giving you free marketing. Absolutely. Someone's owning a little bit of that marketing, which yeah. I get, I understand, but. Um, but yeah, man, you do like a, you can either do a video submission or you actually go there in person. Yeah, it's like American Idol. I mean, you, you sit in front of a, a no name person, you have no idea who this person is, and you do like a, a thirty second pitch. Yeah. I mean, it's a it's a great concept for well, a television Google. program. Yeah, sure. Oh no, absolutely. I mean, I mean, so they're on season what, like fifteen? Yeah, I yeah. Think? I mean, yeah, and yeah. You, you know, it's interesting. Before that, you saw all these sitcoms and everything. Then you saw the reality TV start to emerge, yeah. but. You wouldn't believe the amount of people that are small business owners or medium business sized business owners that love watching that shit. I like watching it. It's great. You know? It's great. It, uh, well, the thing is, after that, you get the profit with Marcus. You know, with Marcus uh, Leota. Um, you get uh, Bar Rescue. You get um, all oh, these. Yeah, you yeah. get all these flipper flops. You get all these things. Yeah, where you start talking. Yeah, yeah, and that. I mean, that really exploded. And yeah. the Shark Tank. I. I wouldn't say started that at Revolution, but I think they had a big. They perfected. They, they perfected sure. it to yeah. an extent. Yeah. Uh, I, I heard uh, you know the guy that was on came to terms with uh, Cuban on on the show, 
but then afterwards, like everything's not finalized, so like yeah, yeah, the kind yeah. of the, the right. deal no, got of retracted and whatnot. But I mean, it's made for TV. But, yeah, uh, I'll say it, it is TV. Everything you see on TV is not real. This is a random point, but someone you're probably going to tell me everything on the internet not true. Uh, not. <laughs> no, I would never say that. That's insane. But uh, I was mentioning the other day, someone was making fun of uh, World Wrestling Entertainment, WWE, because yeah. you know it's a publicly traded company. Yeah. And um, it went from like $25 to like 14 bucks, like overnight. It was like Dude, this crazy why? move. I did. I bought a little bit. Shut um, up. Well, eventually. You, know, you own some WWE? I did. I did. Just just a, for, for a quick, I was like, it makes sense. I'm going to buy 100 shares. It wasn't a big, a big investment. I've already sold it. But they've since fully recovered. So anyway, I was talking about the stock, and somebody was like, dude, that's so fake. You know, wrestling is dumb. It's fake. It's, it's entertainment. I'm like, what is TV? <laughs> Do you think Tom Cruise gets murdered every film? <laughs> In every film, he gets killed. I was like, it's all fake. Yeah, yeah. It's just entertainment. So anyway, the world wrestling entertainment is legit. Absolutely. And Vince, for Vince McMahon is a multi-billionaire, man. Mm-hmm. Thanks to that stock. And, and so I'm proud of what he's done. And yeah, yeah it's totally fake. But they've put on, I mean, they've created so much wealth. Um, anyway, so I was saying all that to say... You know, as far as TV and things like that, you have to be considerate of what you look at, but you can always do an investigation, do research on what type of companies it is, uh, what you're watching, what kind of show, how they put it on, and that will give you more answers to, if you want to do it, how you should do it. Yeah. Right? And that's a huge step in the right direction. I think, um, you know, another just entrepreneurial resource is, you know, we have the Entrepreneur Center here in, yeah. in Nashville, yep. and there's tons of consultants out there that yep. say they can help you with business and, and whatnot, but... You know, if you don't, if you have a little bit of capital and you can, you know, be smart with where you're investing your own money for the business. Are you gonna go spend? I know guys who have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars putting together these these marketing materials for investors. You just spent two hundred thousand dollars putting together this yeah. package to go market it's a million not, dollar not deal. Yet. I'm like, no. think about where you're putting not your money. Yet, no, yeah. And you know what? With the with the uh, advent of the internet, you can find all this shit and the tools are out there mm-hmm. and and it just takes some sweat equity on yourself well and the best thing the best advice you can give someone who may have some some extra cash laying around or a, got it from a grandmother yeah. who passed away you know whatever invest in something you know Warren Buffett's style man invest in something you can contribute yeah. to yeah if you don't know anything about it why because it's going to be better for the, the business you're helping mm-hmm. it's going to be better for you because you can walk in if you're if your grandparents owned a dry cleaners, yeah. and there's a dry cleaners out there that needs yeah. some cash, yeah. give them that 25 grand and go show them how to run that damn yeah. thing. Well, it's funny, because <laughs> at one point, at some point in the future, I'm going to discuss some dry cleaner with you, because I used to work at a dry cleaner. There you go. Um, did I, just, really? I did. That's my, that out of the I know, but it's my first job. Can you give me some more? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Before we're talking about dry cleaners, uh, what's, what's interesting is, um, this might be an old statistic, but dry cleaning is the third most... Uh, I'm trying to think of the R word, but reoccurring revenue model on the planet. Residual. Residual. Okay. Because, number one, you probably know number one, restaurants. Okay. Everyone eats. Residual income? Well, hold on, hold on. It all, everyone's going to eat. You will always make money in a restaurant. Oh. The question is, will you become profitable or not? Security. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Everyone number, needs their clothes clean. Well, the thing is, number two is funeral homes. When's the last time you saw a funeral home go out of business? Right? Doesn't happen. Everyone dry has. cleaners, you, you, there's... You, you have to dry clean your clothes. There's no substitute. You did. And not only that. <laughs> not, well, all, I know you're yeah. not only that. You want more? Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Judging me. Do you want some of the club soil? No, I'm good, man. I'm good. Thank you. Um, but, uh, but not only that, but the margins are insane for dry cleaning. Uh, I'll throw you one more. When's the last time you saw a dry cleaner advertisement on TV or the radio? Zero. You know why? Why? They don't have to advertise to them. They don't need to advertise. Their product is built in. So it's you're telling me if you, see, if you see a dry cleaner advertising, they're probably wasting their money. No, not necessarily. They, they, they don't have to. I'm saying it's like toothpicks. You've never seen a toothpick commercial either, but toothpicks are still around. People still buy them. Mm-hmm. The thing is, it's such well, a buy need. buy my toothpick. It's such a need. But I, what I'm saying is, what if a dry cleaner company took the Geico approach? Which the is Geico one of my pitches approach. to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The Geico. Well, how did Geico become better at insurance than Progressive or Allstate or State Farm? I don't know. They didn't necessarily. What they did is became better advertisers. Yeah. Okay. They became better marketers. And Geico went from like the 15th, I'm making these numbers, 
very low on the scale of insurance to third in the game. Well, it goes back to beer commercials. Absolutely. Like, it does. Yeah. You have to fight. But what I'm saying is that you, there Dilly are... Dilly Dilly's taken over the world. Now Bud Light's probably more popular than Miller. Dude, there are, <laughs> industries, there are industries that can easily be transformed, and I think dry cleaning is one of them. Okay. Um, it was just like, that you brought it up. So here's our business idea, my business idea for the podcast today. Why not like a valet type of dry cleaning where you they come pick it up for you? They have that. Uh, okay. Yeah, there, M-E-R, there, 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 M-E-R, M-E-R-I-T. Yeah. I've never seen... Well, you're welcome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that for you. <laughs> Charitable. <laughs> I've never seen... Um, I've never seen a national uh, dry cleaning, though, service. It's all... I feel like it's very localized or regional. There's there's some. It's... uh, There's some. I think it's uh, RJ Cleaners. Top Hat Cleaners? And no, and no, I think it's called RJ's. Um, they... There are a lot of companies that own the smaller companies. Obviously, yeah, they, they just don't buy them. Out. Do they franchise them? Many, many don't. Many don't. They they literally create their mom and pop store, and yeah. then the, a and big just, big syndicate goes and buys them and provides their cash flow to them. Have you guys seen the movie The Founder? Love that movie. That's a great movie. On the McDonald's franchise. Yeah, great film. I have not. The McDonald's brothers got screwed. screwed. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they got <Yeah>. French fries. <laughs> <laughs> French mayonnaise. Yeah. 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 yeah, it was bad. It was okay. bad. But, I mean, it, it's a good film. Um, but, I mean, the overall instance, that's, it, it's a sector in an industry that uh, I worked in, and, man, the, the margin on that is insane. Because it costs, like, 20 cents to dry clean something. And they'll charge five, six bucks. Oh, yeah. Profit margin is madness. Right. And then they'll give you a rush order. Yeah. Like, really? Yeah. Give me this shirt by tomorrow. Oh, that's five extra bucks. Okay, what, sure. What? Yeah. <laughs> Fine. Why? Yeah, exactly. And Is it going to cost you more? Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> but we're, we're going to make sure it gets done, yeah, though. Right. That's why I, someone asked me that once. Like, Is it going to cost me more? I go, no, but you'll get it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I think another huge business that's underlooked is the waste business. Well, that's what you were talking about earlier, man. That is, so me and my nephew at one point went into the waste business. It, that is huge. Huge, you huge, huge. In every business. Try to, man. Because the more people on the planet, the more waste you create. And that's we will continue true. to get more people. The globe, as I know it, does not expand. So we are coming up with increased demand limited supply aka bitcoin we talked about that last time though we can't make more land we can't make more land so the value of that will go up we can't make more bitcoin either so price will go up over the time uh, but <laughs> <laughs> just a matter of time just a matter of time anyway man some good discussions absolutely some good discussions i feel like it's going to continue but um any last questions for tyler man what's what's the, what's the the number one most interesting deal that you've seen come across your desk in the past couple months that you not necessarily is most fundable and most um, mm. the most the, the one that gets you most excited. You know, you're one telling everyone gets my gears going. You're huh? telling everyone to invest and work in the industry that you really love. What I know you mentioned renewable energies before, but what what's the most promising in your mind? That you've been looking at. Well, I'm under an NDA, so I can't necessarily say the name. Makes of the sense. Company, makes sense. But um, it, I feel yeah. Yeah. You know, going back to it's a tire recycling company, and it's not just the tires they're doing. It's you get paid for picking up the tires, but it's what they what happens when they break down the tires. All yeah. the things you can pull out tires: the carbon, the steel, the actual rubber, the gas that you can wow. make out of them after breaking them down. Yeah. It. That's incredible. The amount of money just out of the carbon they can do is insane. Yeah. It's absolutely insane. Um, obviously, we know about you yeah. know, uh, steel, breaking yeah. that down, recycling that. Um, the playgrounds that can come out of these recycled yeah. tires. The yeah. uh, sp- um, sport courts. Yeah. Yeah. Sport well, courts. You just, yeah, that tour, like, thing you're bouncing on. Yeah. Stuff. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, that's when you know you're in a nice playground. And they got like, Ooh. okay, <laughs> that feels kind of good. Yeah, it does. I like that. Yeah, but um, very exciting stuff. Okay, very exciting stuff, and uh, can't wait to get that one going because what's interesting is how many tires are actually out there mm. and just sitting and collecting. Oh yeah, that is. They have so much and supply. I've heard a lot. And it's just in these yards, or they're buried, or they're yeah, yeah. And old, old vehicles. They're like the number one cause for mosquito infestation. No way, because of the water. 
Dude, this uh, is great. I would have been sold a long time. Right. You got sold quick. I did. I, like, <laughs> I hate mosquitoes. <laughs> That's how I would have pitched it, too. Do you also hate mosquitoes? Yeah. yeah. I recycle tires. Exactly. <laughs> you you're care. in. You're in. You don't care about that. I do. Um, Who likes mosquitoes? Yeah, but it, it's mosquitoes. It's it's rodents. It's it's you know because it's, yeah. it it breeds a yep. an ecosystem. Yep. I guess for for nasty That's things. That's phenomenal. But uh, um, but. Very interesting business, it's fantastic. And, I'm, and I'm proud to be a part of it. And, yeah. And once we get them funded, I'd, I'd be happy to give them a shout out. Cool. Nice. Absolutely. Well, I would love. I love to hear a talk about to one of their uh, CEOs or CFOs, sure. CTOs. Absolutely. Learn more about that future. Bring business. them on. Yeah. I yeah. think yeah. absolutely because that's, that's it is, incredible. It is, a, uh, it is a Tennessee based business. Cool. Oh, nice. Yeah. We'll talk about. We'll talk about oh, that yeah. later. Be yeah. on the, the lookout for them. Yeah. Um, Global Alliance Ventures, if you're looking for five million plus in some debt financing, uh, this man, right look up here. Tyler Hirsch with yeah. Scorebach as well. If you need what's, your, what's your email if anyone wants to reach out uh, to you? Tyler.Hirsch at GlobalAllianceVentures.com. Boom. We'll put it on the webinar, we'll put it on the video, we'll put it on the email in the description box. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks so much for being a part of the IR4 podcast, the fourth industrial revolution, where we simply talk about the future, the past, the present, what things look like, how they're changing, how they're improving, how they're growing, getting ideas from you. Keep posting those comments below. Keep letting us know what you want to talk about. We got more guests every single week. Incredible people like Tyler. Thank you Thank for your you. time, sir. I appreciate it. Thanks for your time, I guess. Thank you for your time. <laughs> You're amazing, ladies and gentlemen. Love, live, learn. Until next time, we'll see you. Bye.